How to control dust on construction sites. In this video, I'm gonna give you a list of ideas for how to control dust and why it's important. Uh, so if you are looking for quick, actionable steps, not only will you be given a really neat resource that lists out these steps, steps that you can take on your construction project, but I think you'll find this interesting because uh, dust protection is a big deal and it's a sign of a project well run, so stay with us. In Phoenix, in Maricopa County, we have strict, strict, dust control rules. Probably you do everywhere. I think I just think I'm special. But it's like super strict, right? So there's a certain amount of opacity that you're allowed to have within 20 feet of the fence. Uh, there's a certain amount of opacity that you're allowed to have inside the site. And the city takes dust like pretty seriously. So uh, going through these courses and being aware of it has really heightened my um, I would say, what would you say, sense of importance or my, my care and concern when it comes to dust. It's not only important to meet regulations, but it's also important for our own health. In Phoenix, we have things like valley fever and um, it helps with visibility and it also protects the product that you're building for your end client. So this is a really important topic. Let's go through these one by one. All right, number one, watering. So uh, this might seem simple and you might think, hey, this is a pretty simple concept. But when I talk about watering, that means watering the soil so that it is not too dusty. There's a couple of uh, considerations here. If you have the wrong type of soil and it gets really powdery, then your watering could turn into mud. So you might need to look into stabilizing or stabilization. Water trucks full time, if you have the right soil conditions, like most of the places where I build, it's very sandy. So a water truck can do a world of good, right? Put that, get that nice crust down on uh, the soil and prevent the dust. But still, as you have lots of traffic, you can get dust again, right? The other thing is, from a budget standpoint, I have seen people simply go get water buffaloes connected to a water source with a meter and a backflow preventer, and that takes time away from the project team. So when we talk about watering, I'm looking, let's look at it from a sustainable standpoint. Can you sustainably water the dirt around your construction site to minimize dust throughout? If the answer is yes and you have the right type of soil, great. If not, we need to look at some of the other options. But watering is definitely an option. Number two, dust suppressants. And I remember seeing this at the first time uh, at a job that I was on with really great superintendents. Uh, this was at the Cancer Center downtown Phoenix. Uh, the, the brand name was just Gorillas Knot. But anyway, it was a biodegradable uh, soil stabilization uh, application that came in these big plastic barrels, right? And I know most of you probably know, but not everybody does. And you can go ahead and mix those with water, put them in a water buffalo or a water truck, as long as you follow the instructions and clean it out properly so that you don't uh, hurt your nozzles. Spray those out in your lay down yards, in your, uh, in your parking area, where your offices are on site to stabilize the soil and make sure that, that it has a consistency, that it'll have this like oily, cohesive consistency so it doesn't turn into dust. This is great. Make sure that it's environmentally friendly. Make sure that it pencils out. Make sure that you have a way to dispense it. Number three, uh, there are such things as containment measures, meaning there are ways to prevent dust uh, from entering um, other, you, your, you, the spaces of your neighbors, right, outside of the, the fence. But again, I really like the idea of preventing dust in the first place. That protects the health and safety of the people actually on your project site. Number four, proper planning. Uh, I love this one, right? Have you ever gone to a site and like, let's say it's 135 acres, but phase one is on five and they come out and clear and grub the entire site and you've got high winds and, and dust storms and that dust is blowing all over the place simply because the earthwork contractor and the clearing and grubbing contractor wanted one mobilization when for like 10 grand, right? You could have literally phased it to where we only disturb the soil over here versus the whole 135 acres. Always look into that because you could be spending $100,000 on dust mitigation, on watering, on soil stabilization, on SWIP, right? So proper planning can really help you to make sure that you are only disturbing necessary areas for your construction. Next, use of vacuums and clean sweep. I really like that. This is a requirement now uh, per table one of the OSHA standards, right? Uh, but it, it needs to be said, right? So instead of 
uh, sweeping and, and lifting all of this dust and silica dust and cement dust, right, from concrete placements, right, and getting that into people's lungs, use vacuums, use tools that while you're drilling have the vacuum attachment. And uh, like I've already said, use clean sweep. So clean sweep, you all know that. It is, it's typically a, like a sawdust type material. It has an additive that allows the, um, the additive to connect with the dust and it keeps it moist so that the dust doesn't go into the air. Throw down a clean sweep, sweep it that way, keep it contained. You're gonna wanna prevent that from uh, creating dust on solid surfaces. Another recommendation that I, that I strongly believe in is stabilizing the site properly from day one, whether that's base or whether that's millings or, wh or whatever it is, even using the chemical additives on the site. What I like to do is see that the clearing and grubbing and grading contractors not just do the pad, but beautifully, and they never do this, and I love them still, but you're gonna have to make sure this is in their contract. Instead of just clearing off a pad and throwing off everything off to the side and not creating clear access ways, we need a beautiful pad and a beautiful swath all the way around the building, stabilized, like I said, with base or with millings or with that soil stabilization additive, beautifully done uh, to where your project can uh, have the least amount of dust possible. Another thing I like to do is actually get the underground utilities and the paving in as soon as possible and work on that base coat of paving throughout and then you'll do that final cap, the top cap on your asphalt throughout the parking lot with any final curb and gutter and sidewalks and that will minimize a lot of dust throughout construction. Another thing we can do is limit vehicle traffic. So you must have the um, delivery trucks, the forklift, obviously cranes, but if you can reduce the amount of traffic on the project site and personal vehicles and work vehicles that are unnecessary, you are going to reduce dust. Another one which I hadn't thought about uh, quite a bit, but uh, this is a really good idea, is covered stockpiles. Quite a bit of dust come from stockpiles throughout the construction site that are blowing in high, high winds at an elevation, right? So covering stockpiles is an amazing idea. So last but not least, educating workers, making sure that crews, foremen, and workers know dust mitigation policies and rules, know the different options that are available to them, and that there is not only stabilization, not only clear access roads, not only like a really, really good substrate, but that we also have access to water. We also have access to ways that we can clean up the project site without creating more dust. So this is really important. And one of the key things that you should keep in mind is keeping dust away from the neighbors and the public as one of your top priorities and protecting our own workers. And so if you, uh, really put your mind into it and continue to research some of the best technologies. And my best advice is make sure this is planned in pre-construction with the right budgets. Then you can keep your job site pretty well stabilized and maintained with as little dust as possible. I'm going to put this into a Canva graphic for you uh, showcasing some of the ideas. Hopefully you can use it on your project site. Let me know in the comments below what you would add, but I hope you're able to be successful with this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.